Shalom, Bokar Tov, everyone. A little more morning Torah of the day under the uh, COVID-19. Uh, it's also a special day now, starting last night in the Jewish calendar. We follow the lunar calendar. It is Rosh Chodesh. It's Rosh Chodesh Nisan. It's the new month, new lunar month, new moon of Nisan, which is the month of Passover, of Pesach. So it means that Passover is coming in about two weeks. And uh, we celebrate today, in fact, perhaps I'll post it later, a special blessing recited according to the Talmud on the new day of the month, specifically Nisan, about the flowering trees. And we're blessed here in Raleigh, North Carolina, to <clears throat> already have some of the trees. A number of the trees are already flowering, but a specific, beautiful blessing. Uh, but I'm not going to talk about that right now. What I want to talk about is back to the Torah portion of the week, Leviticus, which we've been discussing all week here, a little hopefully opportunities for inspiration to think about what it might mean for us, particularly in this crisis. And Vaikra Leviticus deals with sacrifices, with offerings, with uh, the priestly code of how to act and how to do those sacrifices, what are the circumstances, etc. And one of the things I want to connect it to specifically is what would happen uh, in the course of the sacrifices. You know, one of the questions, you know, you, you could imagine as it arises, because the, the Torah portion describes, specifically this one, how if you commit a certain type of sin, you have something called a guilt offering that you would give, and it was described exactly how you should bring it, what type of animal, and if you couldn't afford that animal, what are the substitutes, etc. So you can imagine that if you were lining up at the temple or at the sanctuary uh, and are wandering the desert and you're, you're bringing up a certain animal or a certain, you know, by implication amongst the crowd, some might even know, you know, what you're bringing and perhaps even implied why you're bringing it, even though it's not required for you to tell anyone in the community why you're bringing these things. And that's its own question about how we deal with that social dynamic. But what we can imagine, and it really comes forward uh, as the description of Yom Kippur comes in the Torah later in the Talmud, but you can imagine that when you bring up your sacrifice, there may be some explanation and conversation with the priest, with the Kohen, about what you're bringing and perhaps even why you're bringing it to be sure that you're bringing the right type of sacrifice. So basically, it mandates, you know, by implication, a relationship between the person who's coming with an animal, coming with a sacrifice, coming with a sense of personal conflict or struggle, and then sharing that with the priest. And the priest then holds that information and uses that spiritually in the course of the actual sacrifice to offer this as a way of kind of, of doing repentance, of, of, of giving, um, giving something up, as we talked about yesterday, for the sake of trying to do repair and tikkun. So what I want to add on this, I think is so profound, so profound, is that um, all of us, all of us, I don't care who you are, I don't care if you're a clergy person, or uh, what religion you practice. Uh, I don't care if you're the wealthiest person, the highest status, uh, famous or not. All of us need a place where we can open up our heart. Need ideally a person that we can share what we're struggling with. And even people where we can confess what we've done wrong or what we're even just what, what we're struggling with deepest in our heart. I remember uh, hearing a teaching uh, from Reb Zalman Shakhtar Shlomi, a tremendously influential uh, contemporary rabbi sadly, who died just a few years ago, Lava Shalom, who when he reached his 90s and he was been writing a lot of books and speaking about what it means to become a sage in that later, latter end stage of life, described what are, what, is, what are the positives, what are the challenges. And one of the challenges he explained was that when he reached a certain age, he, first of all, sadly, a lot of his friends and colleagues had died. And he, he did not have a quote unquote rabbi or teacher who was older than him, wiser than him, had more experience in life than him, that he could go to for advice, for a person to seek a certain degree of wisdom from and even someone who could felt he could share his heart with because he reached a certain stage and so he said he, you know instead he had to look for people who were his age but also people who were even younger than him there were some positives to that but what he basically was saying though is he wasn't going to give up on the fact that there's someone in this world with which he can share 
what's going on in his heart. Now, for a lot of people, those people are clergy or therapists or very close friends or family members, children, etc. There are people. Um, but the idea that the Torah is sharing here is that each of us need somewhere to deposit that which is the deepest struggles of the heart. Ones that we're not looking for an answer per se, but we're looking for someone to hear and really feel our presence and really understand and give a lev shomea, an open listening heart to who we are and what we're struggling with. Um, I've had the privilege in Rabbi Jenny to do that with so many of you in our congregation and others. And in fact, I would say that in my career, I've been enormously privileged not only to serve this in our congregation for others, but also for even people who are not Jewish and not members of our community sometimes feel uncomfortable going to their own clergy people or even their own parents. But come and seek out a spiritual leader to confess to, to offer, to, to, because they're looking for someone to truly hear where they're coming from and honor that. Not judge, not demand, tell what to do, but just to listen to their heart and hear their spiritual struggles. So, you know, Leviticus, we've been talking about how some people say, ah, it's sacrifices, then it's, it's, kids don't always love it. But at its root, it talks about what it means to really be vulnerable enough to share what's on your heart, especially places where you feel challenged, especially places where you might have made mistakes with someone else who's going to listen. As a model, perhaps, of what we, we want from God is that God is the ultimate listener, the one who ultimately will sit with us in our greatest struggles, in our greatest pain, and is gonna hold what we're feeling. Leviticus tells us that everybody needs that. It's not a sign of weakness, it's a sign of willingness to grow, that you go to someone and say, hey, I need you to listen for a second. I need to share what's on my heart. I, in this tough time, very tough time, all of us, there is no one who doesn't escape feeling a struggle and dealing with some very difficult, moral, spiritual, psychological struggles. And I wanna invite you. First of all, me, Rabbi Jenny are here, but there are ways to even engage online with therapists, you know, tele-communicate, friends. This is not a time to shut down and say, I'm gonna hold my struggle just by myself. This is a time as best as we possibly can to reach out and maybe say to someone we love and someone we care, listen, I'm struggling with something, I just need you to listen. And a good friend, a good clergy person, a good therapist gonna sit back and just hold that and work that out with you. Because Leviticus tells us everybody has something they need to confess. Everybody has something that they are struggling with. And Leviticus tells us back from thousands of years ago, there is no reason to do that alone. Now, of course, we're not putting this on Facebook Live, what the specifics are. You know, there's privacy and there's, that's dig there's dignity. But it's also not to be hidden and held alone. That burden can be damaging to the soul. So I wish everyone, please God, a good Chodesh Tov, a good new month, please God, with spring arriving and Pesach around the corner. Let's hope and pray that we socially distance properly and God willing, soon, maybe by the end of Rosh Chodesh Nisan, end of Nisan, we'll truly be free in the spirit of Passover. Wish you all, please God, as best a day as possible. Much love. Shalom Chodesh Tov.